bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. Shalom and welcome to my show, Messiah. I am Queen Sylvia A. Thomas, and I'm so glad you've tuned in again this evening. On the Hebrew calendar, today is the 27th day of Nisan, the year 5783 of our Lord and King Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. I'm excited about my show tonight because I'm going to do something a little different. I've written books. I am an author of several, several books. And I've written um, these three books, uh, The Jewish Holidays for Black People and Kosher Eating for Black People and The Sabbath Day for Black People. So today I'm going to share with you out of my book, The Sabbath Day for Black People. You know, the Lord has given us this day every single weekend, every Shabbat, every Saturday to rest and be holy. And I want you to learn a little bit more about, about the Sabbath day, and, um, which is also called Shabbat in Hebrew. And just to learn more about why this day is so important. So I'm going to read some uh, excerpts from my book. And I hope you enjoy it this evening. So starting with my introduction, uh, this book, The Sabbath Day for Black People, is written specifically for the black race of people throughout the world. These books are written first and foremost because you are a special people, a peculiar people, God's treasured people. As Christianity has evolved and more knowledge and understanding of the Holy Bible and the people who lived in biblical times has been revealed, we, black people, must understand that we are the descendants of the original Hebrew Israelite Jews. I use these three words synonymously because they all refer to the descendants of our patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob Israel. Now, being the descendants of these chosen people makes us also the Hebrew Israelite Jews who have not known their true identity. The understanding of who we are is more magnificent than you can probably realize at this time. However, to understand what this means to our people is to understand that there are wonderful, blessed promises that God has for us in these latter days, the days we are presently in. The Sabbath day was originally given to our people to observe forever. The Lord Jesus, Yeshua, is giving it back to us for an everlasting observance. So uh, as I read this book, I want you to learn all about this holy day that belongs to you and how to observe it in modern times. This book is inclusive of all people who desire to learn more about the Sabbath day and how to observe it. It's not um, exclusive. It's inclusive of anybody that wants to observe the Sabbath day. So my first heading is, when is the Sabbath day? Confusion looms around what day the Sabbath actually is. I will clear that up immediately. The Sabbath day is on the last day of the week, the seventh day, which is Saturday. While there is a lot of history regarding calendars, for the sake of simplicity and less confusion, I stand by the Hebrew calendar and the Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar used throughout most of the world to establish when the true Sabbath day is, which ends on the last day of the week, Saturday. God created the observance of the Sabbath day because it is the day that he himself rested from all that he had created in the world. After he had created the heaven the earth, the light, the sky, land, the sea, vegetation, fruit, trees, the moon, the sun, night and day, 
all sea creatures, all birds, all animals, men and women. Then scripture states that he rested from all of the work he had done. So let's read that in the scripture now in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So we are clear. The Sabbath day is not on Sunday. It is Saturday. The Sabbath day is called Shabbat in Hebrew. And it is also called by the Yiddish name Shabbos by many. It is observed sundown to sundown from Friday evening at sundown until Saturday evening at sundown until, until Saturday evening at sundown. All Jew feast days begin at sundown the night before and end at sundown the next day. So that's a, that's a, um, a Jew day is sundown to sundown the lord is leading his people black people back to the holy reverence of observance of this day and what the lord does for us is always for our greater good and benefit so this is a benefit to us that the lord is leading us back to our rest on our sabbath day just think about the continuous rat race of life where our weeks are filled with so much activity. Many people become extremely stressed and depressed because they never take time to rest. God wants to give us back our rest, our time of rest every single week. He wants us to stop on the Sabbath day, Saturdays, rest and be holy taking the time to reflect on the goodness of God in your weekly lives. Taking the time to reflect on the goodness of God in your week weekly lives and get some rest. Be still. The scripture states in Exodus chapter 35 verse 2, Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day, there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. I know a lot of readers are probably thinking right now that it is impossible for you to do this. You work on Saturdays or Saturdays is your only day to get things done from a busy work week. First, I want to say breathe, just breathe, it's okay. Jesus, Yeshua, comforts and assures us in the New Testament scripture that he is Lord of the Sabbath. Consider what the scripture says in Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. And he, meaning Jesus, Yeshua, said unto them, The Sabbath day was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. What that means is that Jesus, Yeshua, is in charge. He understands your situations and your positions. What we do or not do concerning the Sabbath should be done through prayer to our Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And, and this book is written to give you guidelines of how, and how, however, the Lord has the final word concerning your Sabbath day observance. So I've written the book to give you guidelines, but the Lord, he has the final say. You come to him in prayer and talk to him about your desire to observe the Sabbath or um, what it's all about or how he wants you to observe it. If you so desire to observe the Sabbath, which is God's will for his people today, then there are several things you can do. Pray to get the day off from your job or to change your job. Start doing some of your regular chores that you do on Saturdays on Saturday evening when the Sabbath day ends at sundown or on Sundays. 
after church, if that is your regular attendance, and determine in your heart that you are going to take the rest God has for you, even if it is just for a couple of hours on the Sabbath day. The Lord will bless your faith and persistence and give you more knowledge and understanding about the day. He will make it possible for you. So those are some things you can do if you don't have the day off of work. You know, you can, you can squeeze in maybe a couple hours of rest on that day or, um, you know, just try to uh, do some of your regular chores and things at a different at a different time than right specifically in the middle of this of the Sabbath day on Saturdays. My next heading is how did Sunday replace the Sabbath? Many of you may question at this point how did Sunday turn into the day of rest rest and worship effectively replacing the Sabbath? Many people, ministers included, believe that Sunday is the Sabbath. This confusion dates back to the beginning of Christianity when it, it started as the Gentiles, people who were not Jews, were joining the Christian movement, worshiping the risen Savior, Jesus, during the first 300 years. So, so this, this confusion began at the beginning of Christianity. And it started when the Gentiles, people, like I said, who were not Jews, were joining the Christian church movement, worshiping the Lord. Yeshua, during the first 300 centuries, um, this is when they were, you know, trying to come into worship during these first 300 centuries. We had, we had the, the Gentiles coming into the church. I would like to give clarity now that my black brothers and sisters are not Gentiles. So you are not Gentiles. No, you're not the Gentiles. We always thought we were, but we're not. Genesis chapter 10 verse 5 will help you understand who the Gentiles were and are, being descendants of Noah's son, Yepheth. Genesis chapter 10 further helps us to know how all people came to be and what clans they come from. The Gentiles were all people who were not Jews and the Jews were primar primarily black, Hamitic, Semitic people being descendants of Noah's sons, Ham and Shem. The latter Semites were black descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Israel. So you can learn, you know, you can learn more about that. I have another book, um, The Remnant of Israel. This is our story. This is our song, The Biblical History of Black People. And you can learn more about your whole heritage and how, how that is that you are not the Gentiles. During the first century, from about 35 to 100 AD, Christians who were mostly converted Jews leaving Judaism continued to keep the Sabbath day as God had commanded. So during this first century, we had a lot of Christians who were converting as Jews, but they were still keeping Shabbat. They were still keeping the Sabbath day. However, many Gentiles were also coming into the faith. The Gentiles were known as heathens and pagans and prior to their Christian conversion, worshiped Mithraism or sun worship as their official form of religion. So they had this sun god, this, this sun worship. In other words, they worshiped a sun god. It was the greatest competitor of the new Christian religion. As the Gentiles were, sh were starting to worship as Christians, it was difficult for them to completely abandon the tenets of their previous worship of the sun god. So you had all these Gentiles coming in and they wanted to follow the Lord and they wanted to be Christians, but 
they their background is that they worship the sun god so they have a hard time you know um, changing over and not worshiping this sun god so sunday which which for these pagan heathen gentiles were, was called the venerable day of the sun and was the first day of the week and their special holy day of worship hence the name sunday so that's the day that they had always worshiped was on sunday and that's where the name sunday came from is this sun god so during this time in history, Constantine had become the emperor or ruler of Rome in the early 4th century. He is called the first Christian emperor of the Roman Empire. As the Gentiles pressed in to Christian worship, they were still worshiping on Sundays. So, you know, they were, you have these, you know, you have to just kind of put your place, put yourself in the place. There was a lot of Christians that were Jews that were still trying to worship on Shabbat, but then you have these Gentiles pressing in, trying to come into the faith, and they wanted to worship on Sundays. So Constantine, uh, so they were worshiping on Sundays, and Constantine, in an attempt to make their conversion easier, accepted their day of worship as Sunday instead of the Christian Jew Sabbath. Sunday became the accepted day of worship. Constantine was the first to make the legal status of the change from Saturday rest day to Sunday rest day. The newly converted pagan Christians observed and worshiped on Sundays. After Constantine had instituted this change, the Roman Catholic Church reinforced the changes. There were many official there are many official statements from Catholic sources on the subject which claims that the Catholic Church changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. So it was Constantine who is instituted the change, but the Catholic the Roman Catholic Church is the one that reinforced the changes. While Constantine made it law for the proper observance of Sunday and the regular celebration of it throughout the Roman Empire, the Catholic Church takes credit for reinforcing the change and its continuance. And uh, for further research, you can research a lot of the Catholic writings in, 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 li in libraries concerning this. It is very clear in scripture that Jesus, Yeshua, and his disciples observed Shabbat, the Sabbath. There is no scriptural evidence that God, Jesus, Yeshua, changed God's original plan for the Sabbath day to be observed on Sunday. Consider what Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 through 18 states. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it is fulfilled. God, Yeshua, Jesus, never meant for the Sabbath day to be changed to Sunday, but allowed it for the greater purpose at that time for the conversion and salvation of the Gentiles. So I hope you're getting that and understanding how the day effectively got changed from Saturday to Sunday worship. My next heading is why black people should observe the Sabbath day. Stating it plainly, black people should observe the Sabbath day because God gave it to you and me my brothers and sisters, as descendants of the original Hebrew Israelite Jews, the command to observe the Sabbath day was given to our ancestors and their descendants to be observed forever. God gave it to us as a sign between himself and our people that we are his covenant people, meaning the people that he has an agreement with that he would be our God 
and we would be his chosen people, people who are different from all other people of the world. Let us look at what God has told us through the scripture. As we go through these scriptures, I want you to read them in a different way than you may have in the past. Read them understanding that God is specifically speaking to a certain people and those people are you, my black brothers and sisters. Read them with the understanding that these commands were given to your ancestors, the Hebrew Israelite Jews, and their descendants, which we are. Therefore, God is now speaking these things to you. So this first scripture, um, I want to read Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Exodus 20, 11, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in it therein, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. And then uh, I want to skip over to... Then the Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbath. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come. So you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. So as we can see, and that's Exodus chapter 31, verse 12 through 13. This is a sign between me and you for the generations to come. God wanted this observed forever. The Lord made the Sabbath day to be a sign between him and his chosen people so that we would distinguish him from all of the pagan gods, that he was and is the only true God and that he has made us holy. He still wants this today. And uh, notice that the Lord commands us that the Sabbath day should be kept throughout all of our generations for a perpetual covenant. That means forever. As both of the scriptures, um, as, all, as, as, as the scripture I read has shown us, um, forever. Well, this, this particular scripture here says, Exodus 31, 16, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath, throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. So he did not want it to end. He wanted it to be observed forever. Perpetual meaning continuous to keep going. So God never meant for the Sabbath day to end and it was restoring it back to us during this important day of restoration of his people in these latter days. Then my next heading is Jesus, Yeshua, is Lord of the Sabbath. Many of you may have in your thoughts now that these commands concerning the Sabbath are simply Old Testament commands that are not relevant for today. How incorrect you are if this is your thought processes. The Old Testament is extremely relevant today just as it always has been. It not only tells a story of the black Hebrew Israelite Jews, our story, but it also contains the foretelling by the prophets for the days we presently live in. It foretold our Lord and Savior Yeshua's birth, his plan for salvation, and his death and ascension to heaven. So the Old Testament is still very relevant. Yeshua, Jesus spoke several things concerning the Sabbath day. Let us recall his messages and the New Testament scriptures concerning the Sabbath day. And I'll just read a couple of them. And he, Jesus, taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. This is Luke chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. And he, Jesus, Yeshua, taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And, and as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for and stood up to read. So we see that Yeshua 
actually did a lot of his teaching, you know, on the Sabbath day. That's the day he went into the synagogue and was teaching on, on Shabbat. Yeshua, Jesus himself being a Jew, observed the Sabbath and was brought up to observe it as well. He taught in the synagogues, like I just said, on Shabbat. Mark chapter 2 verse 27 says, And he, Yeshua, said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Mark 2 28 says, Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. The verses, the verses above speaks volumes. While our Lord is restoring the Sabbath back to his people, we must understand that we are now under grace and Yeshua, Jesus, has the final word on how we observe this special day. The scripture gives us some clues about Yeshua's will for how it is to be observed. And um, the Lord, you know, basically tells us you know to use common sense on the sabbath don't if somebody needs help or somebody's hurting you can help them you know they used to take it to the extreme and really they wouldn't want to help somebody on the sabbath you know that's how um a lot of the jews were back in antiquity when when yeshua was trying to teach them so you know he said use common sense yes you know we do rest on that day but you don't have you know if there is a need then feel that need have compassion and i'm going to skip over here how to observe the sabbath day in modern times i started observing the sabbath day about well many years ago because of my desire to truly learn what god's rest was and how he wanted us to be holy what i learned is that his rest is that is exactly that rest after long and busy weeks the lord wants us to take that one day out of every single week to rest and relax our minds and bodies and um so i'm going to end there i wish i could go more into what you can do on the sabbath but basically Spend family time, go to football games, go to your kids' sporting events, and just um, rest and don't do any strenuous, strenuous work on the Sabbath. So that's what the Lord is telling us. He, he wants us to enjoy the Sabbath because it was made for a man. So with that, I'm going to say good night, and I may follow up on this last part here about how to observe the Sabbath day because I really did want you to get that. And so we will go over that later. And in the meantime, have a good evening. God bless. Shalom. And I will see you again next week at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm Messiah. Shalom.